consultation. It's a fact. Nobody knows basements better than Owens Corning. It's a performance you don't want to miss. And we've reserved seats especially for you. And the reviews are in. And they're fantastic. It's the event everyone is talking about. It's Lexus of Watertown's Command Performance Event. You don't want to miss it. Lexus of Watertown's Command Performance Event. Showing now until March 31st. Exclusively at Lexus of Watertown. Boston's most famous snowman is using his newfound fame to help out some pets in need. The Boston Yeti became a big hit on social media this winter. Well, the unidentified costume snowman helped dig out stranded drivers. Now, the Yeti is selling stickers, buttons, and bookmarks on Etsy to benefit the MSPCA's Angel Animal Medical Center. The group says it's grateful for the help. Tom Brady having some fun during the offseason. The Super Bowl MVP posted this picture to his Facebook account yesterday. His kids buried him up to his neck in sand. Along with the picture, Brady wrote, someone please dig me out before training camp. We don't know where they are, but it looks pretty warm and like he's rubbing it in just <laughs> a little bit. Right now, a self-driving car is on a historic cross-country journey. The vehicle left San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge yesterday on a 3,500-mile journey to New York. It's the longest automated drive ever attempted. The car developed by Delphi Automotive is equipped with laser sensors that allows it to detect other vehicles, timing merges onto highways, and also read traffic signs. A person will sit behind the wheel in this test run, but won't touch anything unless there's a problem. A true driverless vehicle is at least a decade away. Stay with us, your top stories, weather and traffic all right ahead here on WBZ. Mm -hmm. Lots to talk about. The news at five starts now. Right now at five, the defense in the marathon bombing trial ready to counter the testimony of a computer expert. We're live with details. And it may be a sunny day today, but look at those temperatures running in the teens. How long the chill is going to last? It's going to take a new generation of courageous conservatives to help make America great again. The race is on. The first major candidate for the White House makes it official. He is jumping into the race. And new details on a frightening fall. What investigators think caused a dangerous malfunction on a New England ski lift? From the Channel 4 Studios in Boston, this is WBZ This Morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Today is Monday, March 23rd. Danielle Niles here. It's March 23rd. It's spring. Spring. <laughs> spring, the end of March. You know, it's like you mentally kind of prepare yourself in January. You say, okay, two more months, and then there's light at the end of the tunnel. April will be better. <laughs> Three more, you know, January. And then May will be better than that. Okay, okay. <laughs> then June, no. I know, but it still feels like winter out there. Right. And the, the wind adds a little bite to the air, so, I mean, we're not going to be able to whip out the spring clothes for a little bit. I'm thinking 19 in Boston right now, 13 in Worcester. We are running in the teens across the board this morning. 18 in Falmouth, 19 in Chatham. And there is a gusty wind, occasionally over 20 miles per hour. In fact, current wind gusts, 30 miles per hour in Provincetown, just shy of 30 in Portsmouth. And all it takes is a bit of a breeze to really add that bite to the air. So current wind chill is running in the single digits, both above and below zero right now. One below what it feels like in Worcester. Five degrees in Boston right now. Six in Falmouth, eight degrees in Chatham. So we are dressing for winter this morning. And despite the sunshine that we'll see from start to finish, Today. It's not going to do a whole lot to help our temperatures. Sky's mostly clear right now, and the sunrise is coming up this morning at 643. So it'll be a bright and cold start. Teens for the kids at the bus stop, wind chills in the single digits, 25 for lunchtime, chilly breeze, gusting occasionally over 20 miles per hour. We continue to rise only to around 30 degrees today. Clear and quiet, though, with the sunset at 7 p.m. I am tracking a warm up, though. I'll have more details on that coming up. First, traffic and weather together. Hi, Roby. Good morning. Welcome back. Just when you thought, Danielle, you could open the sunroof on the way into work, forget about it. A few more days of driving with the heat cranked up. Quiet out there in the roads this morning, a little bit chilly out there. Let's take a live look at the Southeast Expressway. Volume building, but traffic is zipping right along. No issues northbound on the X-Way. Route 3 north, 24 north look good. So does 95 and 128. Quick check of the north map. Lots of green out there. Smooth ride down on 93 south from Andover. Route 3 south, Route 1 south, problem-free, 495. 128 
all look good, but it's early. Free? <laughs> it is definitely <laughs> early. Thanks, Ruby. New this morning, the 2016 presidential race has its first major candidate. And I'm ready to stand with you to lead the fight. Yep. Senator Ted Cruz announced he is running for president in a Twitter message released overnight. In his 30-second video, the Texas Republican pledged to, quote, help make America great again. Cruz, a Tea Party favorite, will formally launch his campaign during a speech at Liberty University in Virginia this morning. The 44-year-old was first elected to office three years ago. Cruz, a U.S. citizen born in Canada, recently renounced his Canadian citizenship. When the marathon bombing trial resumes today, we are expecting to hear from the defense as we enter a critical week in the trial. WBZ's Nicole Jacobs is live now at the federal courthouse. Nicole. Bree, the Watertown phase of testimony is slowly coming to an end, but the jury is still hearing very key evidence that could help them determine exactly how much of a role Joe Harzer and I have played in these marathon bombings and the planning of them. Entering the third full week of testimony in the trial for accused marathon bomber Johar Zernayev and the government is still presenting its case. At hand, the Watertown firefight and the evidence left behind. Backpacks containing a computer, a thumb drive and other electronics. Last week, an FBI agent told the court it was Johar's laptop, his home computer, even his iPod filled with jihadist and anti-American material, videos, music and literature. Investigators also found bomb building instructions from an al-Qaeda based magazine how to make a bomb in the kitchen of your mom but as the defense is poised to cross-examine FBI agent Kevin Swindon today they will likely argue just as they did with the 21 year old's Twitter account that mixed in with perhaps disturbing material was also content typical of a college student of his age and it is also worth noting yet again that the defense has already said their client is guilty. They plan to point out that he was simply under the control of his older brother. Testimony is expected to resume here today at 9 a.m. We're live in Boston. Nicole Jacobs, WBZ This Morning. All right, Nicole, thank you very much. The murder trial of Aaron Hernandez resumes this morning. It's the eighth week of the former Patriots trial. Testimony ended last week with prosecution witnesses describing Hernandez as glaring at Odin Lloyd and acting strangely just two nights before Lloyd's murder. Prosecutors also focused on the movements of Hernandez's alleged co-conspirators in the days after the crime. A murder investigation is underway in Worcester. A man was shot and killed after a party over the weekend, and the gunman is still on the loose. WBZ Susie Steimel is live in Worcester with more on this story. Susie? Good morning, Bree. We're live here on Narragansett Avenue in Worcester this morning, and this is where police found a 27-year-old man dead early Sunday morning. Right now, all that's left is just a police cruiser and a makeshift memorial left behind by that victim's friends. Police are still looking for a suspect at this hour. After nearly 24 hours of scouring the crime scene, detectives packed up bags of evidence at 5 Narragansett Avenue in Worcester. They're still searching for a shooter. A Saturday night party left one man dead and a woman hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the partiers scattered. They found 27-year-old Christian Omar Pueyo Rosado dead on the floor in an empty home. They removed his body hours later, making neighbors nervous. This is pretty scary. Beatrice Ayala says this is out of character for the neighborhood. It's scary because it's two, it's two townhouses next to mine, and so... Um, it's unfortunately because this is all family here. Outside the home, those who knew the victim were beside themselves with emotion. Meanwhile, other neighbors are struggling to comprehend how a murder investigation could be taking place on their street. You know, we just moved up here a couple months ago, so it's kind of scary. I don't really know, you know, what to, we've been thinking about it, trying to figure out if, you know, how it really impacts us. Police did visit that other victim, the woman that sustained non-life threatening injuries. They checked in with her in the hospital, but they say that she was uncooperative with the investigation. At this point, police are still looking for both a motive and a suspect in this murder. Live in Worcester, Susie Steimel, WBZ This Morning.
All right, thank you, Susie. Three Boston firefighters and one resident hurt fighting a fire in West Roxbury. It broke out on the back porch of a two-family house on Manthorn Road. Strong winds caused that fire to spread quickly into the attic and roof. None of those injuries are life-threatening, but this morning the chief estimates damage at $750,000. In Burlington, crews were kept busy by a fire on Marion Road. That started yesterday in the garage and spread to the roof. Crews had trouble getting water because of an earlier water main break. Thankfully, though, everyone inside did get out safely. Investigators say a faulty gearbox is responsible for a chairlift accident at Sugarloaf that injured seven people. There are about 230 people on the King Pine Quad Saturday when it began to roll backwards, throwing people to the ground. Some skiers did jump to safety, but four people had to go to the hospital. None of those injuries are life-threatening, but that lift is closed until further notice. The timing not great either. Sugarloaf is hosting this year's U.S. Alpine Championships, which starts tomorrow. A troubling new threat from ISIS. The terror group published a hit list with the names of American military service members, and they're encouraging their followers here in the U.S. to kill them. The new online post comes from a group calling itself the Islamic State Hacking Division. 100 names and pictures are listed with personal information such as addresses. WBZ security analyst Ed Davis says these tactics are dangerous and strategic. All you need is one troubled individual that uh, that falls prey to the uh, to the rhetoric around uh, extremism uh, to act out. It's not like they have to pull the trigger. It's not like they have to finance an operation here. Uh, they're basically activating people here in the country. Officials say it appears the group got the information from social media and other public searches. A Marine Corps spokesman recommends all targeted personnel and their families limit online information. Just over a week left, there are signs of progress in the nuclear talks with Iran. Iran's president says an agreement is within reach, but Secretary of State John Kerry says it's up to Tehran to prove the country has no interest in building atomic weapons. Republicans in Congress are worried they're being shut out of the process. They also fear the U.S. is giving away too much. But I don't know of anyone that wouldn't like to see this come to a good end by an arrangement that would keep Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. But the question, obviously, um, is the substance of this and great concern with what, with what the trend is towards Iran's position. The deadline for a preliminary deal is March 31st. Coming up, conversation over why Starbucks ended their initiative. And acting swiftly, why the pop star has been buying up internet domain names featuring some very suggestive words. Bree, he's the first candidate to throw his hat into the ring, but presidential candidate Ted Cruz was not born in the USA. He was born in Canada and had dual citizenship, but the law says he can run. We want to know what you think. It's our Daily Talker. And we're talking about temperatures running in the teens this morning, but check out these wind chills. Single digits above and below zero. I'll let you know when we're going to warm up a bit this week. Your forecast is coming up. to conquer means delivering the most awarded full-size pickup of 2014 being the first and only car company to equip cars pickups and crossovers with available built-in 4g lte wi-fi and launching the pickup that unanimously won the 2015 motor trend truck of the year chevy trucks high strength steel for high strength dependability now during silverado truck month get a total value of seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars on select silverado 1500s in stock the longest visit wally or chevrolet today are you looking to get in the best shape of your life? Stop into Precision Fitness Equipment, where you'll find the latest in cutting-edge exercise equipment. Our experienced staff will work closely with you and your family to help select the right equipment to meet all your fitness goals. Thanks, Steve. Does your company or municipality need a fitness room? Then Dave's your man. We have the knowledge and expertise to set up any size fitness room. For the best in home and commercial exercise equipment, visit a Precision Fitness Equipment location near you or online at precisionfitnessequipment.com. Is this it? Okay, there's a lady on the porch. She looks crazy. Siri, can you tell us about the Sproutbrook Inn? 
I found some information about this route brook and slayings on Wikipedia. Slayings? Would you like me to? BMW assist. Book us at the closest five-star hotel. Furthest five-star hotel, please. Okay, go, 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 go. The BMW X3 with connected drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Hurry in now to the BMW Sports Activity Sales Event for exceptional offers. There's only one Boston. A legacy like no other. It continues to grow. One memory at a time. It's the one that was first. And its moments will now forever last. Be part of the legacy and preserve your memories in the Boston Marathon Digital Time Capsule. Hashtag, we run together. Visit jhextramile.com. That is, if spring can find you, a Subaru with symmetrical all-wheel drive can help you enjoy it. Get ready for spring and a brand new Subaru XV Crosstrek, well-equipped for only $21,595. Get a great deal and go love spring. Today, Google celebrates the real-life Amy Farrah Fala. Check out the doodle honoring Emmy Nother, who made groundbreaking contributions to the fields of algebra and theoretical physics. Physics, smart lady here today would have been her 133rd birthday. Albert Einstein, get this, called Emmy Nother, quote, the most significant creative mathematical genius thus far produced. That's a lot coming from Albert Einstein. No kidding. But guys, because she was a woman, Emmy had to ask permission from the professors at her university to attend class. And I and I That's also crazy. read that she didn't get paid for like seven or nine years or something when she was doing all this research just because she was a woman. What? Amazing how far we've come oh, in a short amazing. amount of time. And for Albert Einstein to, to call her that. a genius, you know, that's yeah. that's remarkable. Love but, it. Um, so we're in the single digits this morning. <laughs> the science wah, wah. none of us are happy with today. <laughs> uh, but I think you'll be happy with the warm-up we have later on this week. It will come with a couple of rain showers, but at least we'll kind of at bump into we'll that there. warmer air. Absolutely. Quiet start this morning as you take a live look out over the city of Boston right now. A lot of lights out there, and it's a cold start temperature-wise. Teens for most of us. 19 in Boston, 13 in Worcester. 17 in Taunton and 18 in Falmouth right now. There's just a bit of a breeze. That all it, that's all it takes to really add the chill. So Worcester feels like it's one below zero this morning. Three below in Concord, New Hampshire. Five degrees in Boston. Single digit wind chill readings all the way back down to the Cape. So that's certainly what you want to dress for this morning. Grab the shades though because satellite and radar is quiet. Satellite shows us where the clouds are and there aren't any. So mostly clear sunrise coming up uh, just before 645 this morning. It's going to be a bright and beautiful looking day today, just on the chilly side. Rain to the south off the Carolina coastline and snow through parts of the Midwest. Don't have to worry about either of these. In fact, high pressure is going to be building in here over the next couple of days. So what that means for us today is there's still an active breeze gusting at times over 20 miles per hour. Tonight that wind will relax a bit. Tomorrow it will be much lighter and that does make a difference. So with sun and clouds tomorrow, temperatures will be up around 40. That'll at least feel a little bit better. Wednesday that high crest right overhead. So a light wind in the morning, bright skies. Clouds will increase on Wednesday. But that's actually a sign of some of the warmer air that's going to be trying to push in. By Wednesday evening, there may be a couple of rain showers scattered that come on by after the evening commute. And then on Thursday, we're going to jump up into this warm air. It will come with a threat for a shower or two, especially Thursday afternoon. But we may approach 60 degrees, at least well into the 50s by the time we get to Thursday afternoon. So that'll be quite a difference compared to today. 30 for a high in Boston, low 30s, Bedford, Norwood, upper 20s. We'll do it here from the Worcester Hills through southwest New Hampshire, low 30s for most of us in the Cape and Islands as well. Overnight tonight, pretty similar to what we have out there right now. Teens for most of us, but the wind won't be as strong. 20s on the Cape, nonetheless, just a few scattered clouds, still very cold. Highs tomorrow bump up right around 40 degrees, so 5 to 10 degrees milder than today, still below average. We top out around 38, 39 in Boston and right around 40 in the Metro West. Low 30s, though, on the Cape and Islands. AccuWeather the seven-day forecast. 40s, though, on Wednesday with increasing clouds. So that's a seasonal day. And then we come up into the 50s on Thursday. Breezy, mild, threat for a shower. Well, maybe a couple that linger into Friday will be about 10 degrees colder and then looks pretty quiet. 
Never too early to start thinking about the weekend. 40s for Saturday and Sunday. Traffic and weather together. How was your weekend? Robert? So no sunroof open till Thursday morning's commute. I don't know. I've seen people with sunroofs open, like when it's like 40, you know, because it's just Maybe feels they're nice. smoking. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I look forward to the time of year where I can cruise into work overnight and have mm -hmm. the sunroof open yeah. and just crank music. Be blasting so your music. The you first do. morning that happens, I'm going to be thrilled. Awesome. Could be Thursday. All right, Danielle. <laughs> let's uh, take a live look over 93 in Somerville right now as we check the drive into the city from the north. Things are looking great on 93 right now. Smooth ride all the way down from Andover. Just check Route 3 south up in the Lowell stretch. That looks good. Route 1 north in Peabody looks decent. Uh, so does 495 and 128. Quick check of the south map. Lots of green out there. That's going to change very soon as the expressway northbound will heat up. Route 3 north looks good right now, but that's going to change very soon as well. 24 north, 95 north, trouble free at this time. Bree? All right, thanks so much, Roby. One of my favorite stories of the year here, Roby. Today, the British public will be able to pay their respects to a legendary king who died more than 500 years ago. This weekend, a colorful and historically accurate procession brought the remains of King Richard III to Leicester Cathedral, where he'll be reburied. The king's remains were found in an unmarked grave under a parking lot in 2012. History was not kind to Richard, who was painted as a hunchback and a murderer. Historians now believe at least some of that was propaganda by political opponents. And singer Taylor Swift buying up some questionable domain names, but not for the reason you might think. The names reference adult themes. Swift is purposely buying them to keep them offline. And that way her name, and more importantly, her multi-million dollar reputation, won't be associated with inappropriate themes. A major coffee chain's initiative on race has ended. Starbucks says its baristas will no longer be encouraged to write the words race together on coffee cups. But the chain says the decision is not a reaction to the criticism generated by the move. The CEO says the campaign was always supposed to end yesterday. Today's Daily Talker, all about a big announcement involving next year's presidential election. Here's Roby. Bree, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is the first candidate to officially announce that he's running. The conservative Republican told the world on Twitter last night he's doing so even though he was not born in the USA. Now, there are a lot of iconic American images in Ted Cruz's first campaign ad, uh, but he was born in Canada. His father was Cuban, his mother American. Yeah. Cruz has a dual, had a dual citizenship until last year when he renounced his Canadian citizenship. Now, we may, you may be thinking, wait a minute, how can he run if he wasn't born in this country? After all, the U.S. Constitution requires a president to be a natural-born citizen. Well, turns out, under U.S. law, being born to an American mother automatically gives you American citizenship. So we're wondering, what do you think? Should he be able to run despite being born in Canada? A lot of you are commenting. Let's check some of those out right now. Vinny writes, I think you should have to be a natural-born citizen, period. Derek says, being born in Canada, I don't think he should be able to run. Hmm. You can comment on our Daily Talker, our website, Twitter, Facebook. Those are the ways to reach us. We'll read some more of their comments coming up at 6. I had to laugh because they put the two people who have very little filter on this story, a political story, you know, when it's uh, Daily Wait, am Talker I one of those people? I think you and I are probably <laughs> the two, you know, of, of all the folks. But, you know, I... I I think that we kind of limit our talent pool when we don't invite other folks. He's got citizenship. I didn't realize until this morning that being born in another country and having an American yeah. mother was enough to qualify. I think a lot of people out there are going to yeah. be surprised right. until they see this. And I think you're going to see in a lot of Cruz's ads, heavy, heavy, heavy right. push right. on American Absolutely. iconic Themes. symbols and sure. images. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Ruby. Okay. Make sure you guys comment as well. Stay with us. His kids do what the Seahawks couldn't. Barry, Tom Brady, coming up the story behind an adorable picture that showed up on Facebook. And the Bruins make a push for the playoffs. Could they bolt from Florida with a win? to the third, fourth, and fifth graders from Balch Elementary School in Norwood for that morning message. You can send us a video to help Boston wake up adults too, everybody. Send us your morning message at cbsboston.com, Facebook, or Twitter. 
grew up a Sox fan. My dream was to make it to Fenway as a pitcher. But life hasn't always been a walk in the park for Fenway's head groundskeeper. A car came off the street, hit me, threw me 20 feet in the air. How a miraculous series of events led him to the base path less traveled. I think every challenge is an opportunity. From Major League hopeful to Boston's most famous landscaper. Have you ever seen a weed around here? <laughs> Try not to find those. David Wade takes us in the shoes of Dave Miller tonight at 11. There's parallel parking, or there's parking that's unparalleled. And two miles per gallon difference may not seem like much until you have to walk it. Reliability is now an American thing. Drive the all-new Chrysler 200 during the Chrysler Award Season event. Get a low-mileage lease on 200 Limited for $149 a month for well-qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles. At Workers' Credit Union, we like doing what's right for our members. That's why this year, our annual give-back program gave members over $2.5 million. And that seemed to go over pretty well. I was actually shocked. It was uh, quite substantial. Definitely surprising and very nice. <laughs> it's kind of extra money that you, you didn't think you had. And I appreciate the money. Thank you, workers. Workers' Credit Union, home of the give-back program. The more you bank with us, the more you get back. Three Day Blinds design experts bring the showroom to you and personally help you choose the custom window treatments that are just right for your home. We carry hundreds of styles of blinds, shades, shutters, and drapes in patterns and colors to match any decor. We design, we measure, we install. You relax. 